Hello, second graders. It is time for the last section of chapter one in Mrs. Pigglewiggle. We're learning about Mrs. Pigglewiggle, and in the last chapter, she helped a little girl who didn't like to wash dishes. All right, here we go. Then Mary Lou told them all about Mrs. Pigglewiggle, and Mary Lou's mother said, Oh, yes, I remember seeing that odd little house. She sounds like a charming friend, and if you are certain that she invited you, you may go over there after school tomorrow. The next day after school, Mary Lou went to see Mrs. Pigglewiggle. She took her best friend Kitty Wheeling and with her, and Mrs. Pigglewiggle was very glad to see them and showed them through her upside-down house and served tea and cookies. Kitty said her with her mouth full of cookies, My worst trouble is bed-making. I cannot get them smooth. I'd much rather wash dishes like Mary Lou. Well, my mother won't let me change with my sister, Sally, who washes dishes until I have learned to make beds properly. Oh, and I just despise making beds. Mrs. Pigglewiggle poured herself another cup of tea, gave a saucer of cream to Lightfoot and four cookies to Wag, then said, if you think you have a hard time making beds, Kitty, imagine how hard it is for me. You see, the cruel queen sleeps in my beds every night and inspects them every morning. And if she finds a single wrinkle, even one as big as a pin, she will have me thrown in the dungeon. Come upstairs and I'll show you how I have to make beds. They went upstairs and Mrs. Pigglewiggle threw the covers clear off the front, the foot of one of her own beds. Then she had Kitty help her make it, and when they finished, it was as smooth as the floor, no wrinkles. Mrs. Pigglewiggle said, the secret is to throw the covers way back. If you simply cannot smooth up the bed, because if you do, there might be a wrinkle down by the foot, and of course, the cruel queen will find it, and then down into the dungeon. Mrs. Pigglewiggle took the bed all apart again and said, now, Kitty, you and Mary Lou make the bed while I tell the cruel queen you are ready for an inspection. She went into the closet and shut the door. Then she came out just as Kitty and Mary Lou finished the bed. She was no longer Mrs. Pigglewiggle, but the wicked, haughty, cruel queen. On her head, she wore a glittering crown. She, her hair hung down her back in deep waves. Around her shoulders, she had purple fur-trimmed robe, and on her face she wore a smile so cruel it made Kitty's teeth chatter. She stalked over to the bed and lay down. With her gold slipper, she felt the bottom of the bed. With her ring finger, she felt the top and the sides. She stood up with her, her scepter. She pulled back the spread to see if the pillows were wrinkled. Everything was perfect. The cruel queen's face became convulsed with fury. She yelled, not a wrinkle, not a single lump. I am furious. But never fear, little slaves. My day will come into the dungeon and you will go. Come, my servants, we will go. Mrs. Pigglewiggle stalked into the closet. That was the beginning of Mrs. Pigglewiggle's friendship with the children. The next day, Mary Lou and Kitty and Kitty's little brother Bobby and Bobby's friend Dickie went to Mrs. Wing Piggle Wiggles for tea. And the next day they came and each brought someone else. And pretty soon every single child in town had been or was going to go to Mrs. Piggle Wiggles house. She showed Bobby how to sneak out and get the fireplace logs without being caught. She showed Dickie how to use a lawnmower and how it is really a magic machine that mows down the enemies millions and billions of time. She taught Max how to take out the ashes without making sound and without leaving a trace to show the train robbers who were on the trail that he and the sheriff had camped there that night. Mrs. Pigglewiggle certainly knew how to make work fun, and she knew that there were certain kinds of children that love to do, even though they did not know it, how to do it very well. Like painting and ironing and cooking and carpentry. One day at Mrs. Pigglewiggle's, there were two little girls baking cookies. 
one little boy baking a pie and getting flour on the floor and eating most of the dough, a little girl ironing in a very wrinkly fashion, all of Mrs. Piggle-Wiggle's clean clothes, four boys with paint on their faces and feathers in their hair, chopping kindling, two boys painting the dog house, three little girls da daring old pirates, old pirate socks of Mr. Piggle-Wiggle's, and pirates, pirates everywhere, digging in the backyard, shooting and yelling and running through the house and grabbing hunks of raw cookie dough. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle was sitting over in the corner of the living room, sewing on doll clothes. She was wearing a jeweled crown and Kitty Wheeling was standing beside her throne, which was a chair with a tablecloth draped over it. Dripping her hairbrush, dipping her hairbrush in a glass of water and making Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's hair into long, wet curls. Kitty said, Your Highness, shall I use the gold or the silver hairpins? Mrs. Pigglewiggle said, Oh, let's use the ones with diamonds in them. Hairdresser, they look better than with this crown. Just then the telephone rang, and it was some mother wanting to know what to do with her little girl who wouldn't take a bath. And this is how Mrs. Pigglewiggle got started with her wonderful cures. She told Hubert's mother about the won't pick up the toys cure, Patsy's mother about the radish cure, and Alan's mother about the slow eater tiny bite taker cure, Anne and Joan's mother about the fighting quarrels cure, and Dick's mother about the selfish boy cure, Mary's mother about the answer backer cure, and Bobby and Larry and Susan's mother about the never want to go to bed cure. And that's the end of the first chapter. So it sounds like Mrs. Piggle Wiggle is kind of like a figuring out how to um, cure kids who don't want to do things. And they, she's starting to help parents out too. All right, we're going to see what happens next with Mrs. Piggle Wiggle next time.